Hey, it's Sarah with House Copper, and today we are going to be making an either cone, not an either cone, or I suppose you could say an other cone. Uh, it was what was used in the old days by doctors to administer um, anesthesia and also to put you to sleep. So, other cone, either cone, either cone. Um, but it looks like this. This is the drawing I received from this particular customer who wants me to ha make this reproduction for their reenactment. And the fun thing about this is, is once again, there is no pattern in existence, at least not in the traditional metal smithing, sheet metal and copper smithing books that are available. So I get to guess and come up with a pattern, which, um, starts out with something that looks like this, which is also from the customer. But as you can see, we have some initial um, uh, dimensions, which are a great start, but uh, they still need to be translated in the flat. And what the nice thing will be is once I have created this pattern, I will be able to make multiple cones for anyone else who is reenacting as a doctor from the uh, Revolutionary War and uh, a little bit later. Um, so I'm going to just very quickly show me doing the frustrum of a cone and also configuring out the top portion of the piece. Um, and I'll try and pause and make notes here with you. But what I'm really also gonna do is I'm going to put a, um, a link to the document which Bob Bartlemy, the master tinsmith I learned under, um, put together in how to create the frustrum of a cone so that if you are making anything that is a cone shape, you will have the little hack to do it yourself. Um, since I really won't be able to do an absolute play by play and because everybody's pieces, as soon as the dimension changes, even one thirty second, you have to uh, redo your whole pattern. So I'm not gonna do this unless you're making one exactly and then you'll have the pattern and things like that. So without further ado, we're just gonna get started with the math and hope as usual, I don't mess it up too royally and um, we are able to get a pattern and then we'll be able to build it. So here we go.
Okay, so now you've seen the absolute basics basics of a frustrum of a cone. And if you were only doing that, you would be done. But you're not, you're actually building something. So now we actually have to add in an additional amount of material in the pattern to allow for the seam work. Now, based on the photographs, the uh, side of the cone is a crimp seam. So it's one of these. So I have to allow for um, three sixteenths on one side to take one half of the crimp seam. And I think it's, is it seven sixteenths? I will put it in down below. I know it off the top of my head. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head. I always want to say seven sixteenths. It's not seven eighths. That's all I know. Um, but uh, so, and then set, let's just say seven sixteenths for the other side. So you're going to see me adding that to the pattern next so that my pattern encompasses the seam work that I know I will always have to do. Then I'm also going to add in three eighths of an inch along the exterior of the pattern, which will allow me to accommodate the wiring that also needs to happen um, based again on the photograph. This isn't just like plain metal. You don't obviously want sharp corners of metal right on somebody's face. You'll totally slice up their face if you're actually giving them either. And um, so I'm gonna be adding three eighths to the outside largest part of the the perimeter of the pattern to automatically accommodate for the wiring. This will change depending on if you were doing a lap seam, you would only add an eighth of an inch to one side of the pattern. If um, you had a thicker wire, you'd obviously be um, adding even more to the exterior part of the, the big part of the diameter um, to accommodate a thicker wire. So I'm just gonna show you the basics on how I do that so that you can use it and fudge it yourself based on what you're building. Um, but that's gonna slightly change the pattern. You can add this on the front end um, if you want. I just do it in the back end because for me it's easier to do after I've done this. But if you like doing more complicated math, you're welcome to um, accommodate these measurements while you're doing the earlier measuring. But um, so that's what I'm gonna do next. part of the the cone the other cone either cone either cone and um, we also need to make the handle which is also made out of copper now both of these I'm going to design in the flat we don't have to do any um, official frustums of a cone because we'll actually be able to kind of figure it out based on the uh, finished diameters and also um, unfortunately I do not have um, the complete um, um, numbers from the the customers so there is going to be some guesswork but those will be cut out in the flat and we don't actually need to make um, a frustum of a cone to do so um, we'll actually have it out in the flat so we're going to do the top part next which is going to be put together with um, a simple lap seam along the base where it connects to the bigger cone a simple lap seam on the side and then accommodate for a wire on the very top so um, it's uh, quite simple and um, normally I would just cut this in the shop, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna do a brief um, demonstration on figuring out that particular piece and then we're going to move into the handle.
Now, okay, all I have is knowing, ignore that, that's for this piece here, which we're not gonna worry about right now. Right here, all I have for this handle is that it is three and a quarter long, which is actually really short. I mean, it's short, but that's the traditional. So, um, and also I can tell that it is held together by a, uh, a lap seam here. And then based on the interior there, it is abutted to this part of the cone by nothing but a butt seam. And so, um, and this is not even finished, it's actually raw. I'm probably going to fold that over. So I'm going to add um, probably a quarter of an inch. So this is going to end up being um, <clears throat> uh, three and a half. I just, uh, three, 3.5, well, I can't do this. 3.5 inches, so I have to add. Like I'm gonna eyeball, okay. So that's all we know. Now, I'm actually not going to do the frustrum of a cone for just this handle. I think I'll be able to accommodate it by taking my estimated diameter of how um, round I think this end and this end should be, times and times pi, and add that length right here. Um, so it'll look very lopsided, but because all we're doing is curling it around, it's it's going to end up working out okay, I think. Um, plus, I'm also going to have to add in that um, accommodation, that eighth inch for a lap seam. So that's what we're going to do next, and hopefully it works. Okay, I will admit that took an exorbitant amount of math I wasn't planning on with way too many decimals, but in the end, Basically what you're doing is you're finding what we found over here very early on. Um, and this is what you'll cut out and form into a very tight um, handle here. Um, and we've already got, you know, the seam allowance for the eighth inch lap seam. So that's gonna be the basis of this. I'm actually gonna figure out this little tiny folded piece once the pattern is cut out and we've cut out the pieces and assembled because even though the drawing says that the inner tab is one and a half, inches um that probably is not a accounting for any um seams inside there so i'm gonna make it up once we get in the shop but okay so there was all the pieces of building this pattern that we are using based on a photograph which is a tremendous amount of the work that i do do when i get custom pieces which is why it takes so long and i know this video is not super long but there's um a lot of other like pieces that are really hard to show um, just the extra math and the prep and everything like that to get it going. Uh, as I said, the pattern um, making PDF will be available in the uh, description below, as will um, everywhere else you can find me. House Copper, um, Copper, Iron and Clay, the book that's out, the um, um, my Facebook, and uh, my website and everything else like that. If you have any thoughts or feedback or comments or ideas or a different way that you find the frustum of a cone, tips for the rest of us, I'd love to see them. I know everybody else would appreciate um, them and I always love to engage with all of you. So thank you so much. Please don't forget to hit subscribe and tell your friends and family and like this video and I will see you next time in the copper shop.